TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live. By the time you see this, we won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it. Just a little warning screen. Uh, probably won't need it. Get like that sometimes, man. Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the live streams, man. The username's at the bottom of the screen. And... We got a Patreon. We do that five days a week, man. I tried to pay for my Patreon today. They charged me twice. Just give me my money, please. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the Battle of Hackney, 98s and ZT. ZT. There we go. Let's take two. <laughs> the London Borough of Hackney. Oh, is my God. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. The London Borough of Hackney is a borough located within East London. The borough is among the five deadliest and most dangerous London boroughs. In 2023, the crime rate within Hackney was 135 crimes per 1,000 people, which is surprisingly higher than surrounding boroughs. Hackney. Like I was saying and before, this is the second time I've recorded this. I recorded the first four minutes and I messed up somewhere. Anyway, I feel like Hackney don't get talked about that much. It's always London, 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 London. Oh, you got to be careful of London, but this is more dangerous than London. Stay away from here. Hackney's <laughs> crime rate actually comes in 29% higher than London's, being 105 crimes per 1,000 people. The population of Hackney is around 279,000 residents. And from an outside look in, on the surface, the borough doesn't seem bad. However, what a lot of people that live in and around Hackney don't know about is the disturbing gang war that has spanned decades and has resulted in kidnappings, shootings, and murders, all being linked to the ongoing war. This being the gang war between 98s based in Homerton and ZT based around the London Fields area within Hackney. These two gangs have actually had a historic beef that has spanned over three decades, being one of London's oldest postcode rivalries. Now, the London Field Boys, or ZT, is a large street gang based within the London Fields area in Hackney E8. The ZT gang is mainly based around the Blackstone Estate and the Moreland Estate. However, they also operate in other surrounding estates. The older generation of ZT is known as the London Field Boys, or LFB for short, whilst the younger generation is known as ZT, or Zero Tolerance. The gang is also referred to as mash town and simply fields anyways the london field boys was originally created as an offshoot from the older hackney boys as the london field boys made up most of the hackney boys in membership it would be around this time being the 1990s and 2000s that the london field boys would be significant in the gang war between tmd or tottenham mandem and the hackney boys it would be around the late 2000s that members of the london field boys would create a music group this being referred to as mash town with this group and i was asking who is their most notable artist? Because I don't know. I, I'm drawing a blank. Not on the funny stuff. I'm just really drawing a blank. Like, who's their most notable artist? Who would I know? And then I also said, hold on, let me finish. Being affiliated with the London Field Boys. Following the gang war between the Hackney Boys and TMD, younger generations of both gangs became more prominent within the streets. One of these being the London Field Boys, which became prominent within the streets and had begun to beef the nearby Holly Street and Homerton gangs. In recent years, a younger offshoot gang to the London Field Boys would become a lot more significant in the streets. This gang being referred to as ZT, ZT. or Zero Tolerance, which is the gang that was portrayed in Netflix's successful show top boy and that's and that brought me to my next question which was i guess you don't really need a, a notable artist when you was referred to in top boy one of the most prolific hood classics in in uk history probably right ZT's stand for zero tolerance for any other gang for anyone else shot in on the streets and it all work for me 
However, we can't talk about ZT without talking about their main rivals, 98s. On the opposing side of ZT is a large street gang known as 98s. The 98s gang is actually two small street gangs based on different postcodes within Hackney, these being the postcodes E9 and E8, hence the name 98s. The gang based on the E9 postcode is known as Niners. However, the gang is also referred to as Homerton, as that is the main territory that the gang takes up. The Niners gang goes all the way back to the 1990s, with the Hackney boys originally drawing members from E9. The current Niners gang from E9 was originally an offshoot gang from older gangs based around the E9 postcode. An example of this was CBR, or Certified Balance Road, with this gang sharing an alliance with E5, this being referred to as 925. This alliance was formed around 2007 and was the affiliation between Balance Road based within E9 and Pembury within the E5 postcode, with these two gangs still being affiliated after nearly 20 years. The Niners gang is affiliated with Pembury, Hoxton, and most importantly, Holly Street. Now, Holly Street or the Holly Street Boys are a street gang based around the Holly Street estate within the E8 postcode. This gang is very closely allied with Niners, with these two gangs making up the larger 98s gang. The Holly Street gang has been operating since the 1980s. However, the gang has gone by different names throughout the years. One of the more significant names was that of Rowdy Bunch, which was a group of young members from surrounding areas. And it would be the younger generation to Rowdy Bunch, this being known as Junior Rowdy Bunch, that would then become referred to as Holly Street. The Holly Street gang is actually known to be one of the biggest and richest street gang. If you ever paid attention, they like structured their stuff after like football foot teams. Like you know how they got the the older like if oh y'all know what I'm talking about. Like there's an older club and there's just ones for youths. They got this the same kind of structure within the London borough of Hackney. In recent years, the Holly Street Gang would form a close alliance with nearby Niners, creating the Gang 98s, as both gangs have territory on the E9 and E8 postcode. Now, for years, the Holly Street Gang has had a rivalry with nearby London Fields or ZT, with this being known to be one of London's oldest ongoing postcode war. This war spanning from the early 1990s to present day. Prominent members of 98s include Unknown T, who is a part of the Niners set, KO also a part of the Niners set, and Billy Billions, who Mm. Salute Billy, man. That's my boy. They like, know I don't choose sides and they beef because I ain't got, I don't know nothing about it. But just Billy's just a real dude, man. Is a part of the Holly Street set Stand on a lot of business. Gang. Now, the 98s gang is affiliated with Hoxton, Pembury, and Essex Road, whilst the 98s gang has beef with nearby EC1, A Road, and most importantly, London Fields. However, you may be confused as to why these two gangs have had a deadly rivalry for almost three decades that has resulted in multiple people dying. Now, the beef between 98s and ZT was started around the late 1980s and early 1990s and is alleged to be due to a junior rowdy member allegedly attacking and stabbing a member from the London Fields gang with this member then being charged with manslaughter. However, this is only alleged and may be wrong. So if you have any other information, drop it in the comments. Anyways, during- And, and they definitely will because the YouTube comment section is full of uh, detectives, junior detectives, junior M16, you get me. During the early days of the beef, members associated with London Fields and members associated with 98s would clash, with it being said that there were 30 members of London Fields and only 10 members of Holly Street, E8, with this clash then turning into one of London's first postcode riots. A lot of these street brawls would occur between London Fields and Holly Street around this time, with it slowly escalating into a more dangerous beef, and it would be around 2003 that the first person would be killed as a result of the rivalry. In 2003, a member of the London Field Boys, known as JD, would begin to gain attention within the streets of Hackney, this mainly being due to the fact that JD's brother was a well-known and respected member of LFB known as CS, who was even alleged to have been the boss of LFB at the time, this then resulting in JD becoming a very loved member of LFB, so it would come as a surprise that in June 2003, JD would sadly fall victim to the streets, with the death of JD marking a war. In June 2003, JD and other LFB members would be on their way home from a street party. The members would walk for a few minutes before arriving at the junction of Lansdowne Drive and Shrubland Road within Hackney. Two members of Holly Street, these being Pepe and Aaron, would be in a car and would see the LFB members. The Holly Street members would shoot JD in the leg before then shooting him in the chest with a shot. This is why I be trying to tell people who, when you active, you can't be walking nowhere. You can't take public transportation. You can't walk nowhere. You can't have a nine to five. You can't do none of that. You cannot do normal civilian stuff. You cannot.
Shotgun. The attackers would flee, and JD would attempt to escape the attackers. JD would actually be able to jump over a wall before collapsing to the ground and being pronounced dead only moments later. Police and emergency services would arrive on the scene and would launch a murder investigation. Both members affiliated with Holly Street would be arrested following this attack, these being Pepe and Aaron. They would both be charged with the murder, and later, in 2005, would be sentenced to life with a minimum of 15 years, with one of the members even snitching on the other in order to reduce the time he was sentenced to. Rest in peace, JD. Follow the Damn! You snitched on the gang. You snitched on the bro. Got 15 years to life, and you still in jail, and you having a miserable sentence now that you snitched. Like let's let's about 15 years probably feel like 30 when you snitch in jail. So all that for what? The death of JD, the beef between Holly Street and London Fields would escalate into a war, with both gangs now having a deadly beef with each other, with members often catching each other, this then resulting in stabbings, shootings and brawls occurring between each side of the rivalry. It would be around this time that London Fields would also be in a deadly war with the TMD gangs from Tottenham, with this beef also getting dangerous, resulting in the deaths of Marga, WH and Skip, who was killed only months after JD was killed. However, this isn't the rivalry I'll be discussing in this video. Now, not much is known about the beef following the death of JD, so I'll only really be discussing the main events and drills, and it would be around the early 2010s that a young member of LFB would start to get active within the streets, this member being known as DDOT, who was only 15 when he would start to gain attention. However, in the following months, rival members would start to notice him, and on his 16th like birthday, he would sadly fall victim to the streets, with this incident resulting in members creating ZT or Zero Tolerance in his honor. On the 24th of April 2013, a member of London Fields known as DDOT would be out celebrating his 16th birthday. At around 3 p.m., DDOT would be traveling on the 393 bus in North London. When a member of Pembury known as Skid would spot him, the two members would seemingly- Brother, I just said it. When you are an active member, you cannot do that type of- <laughs> You better take a black taxi. These are things- These are what we call lacking. If you're a member, you got beef, and you get on these buses and trains, and it's, it's not- you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not... It, it's that civilian activity. You shouldn't be doing that. Not when you got ops have a confrontation. Before Skid would retrieve a knife and would stab DDOT multiple times, Skid would flee following the attack and the bus driver would pull over calling the police. Emergency services would arrive on the scene and would treat DDOT before he would be airlifted to a nearby hospital. However sadly, only hours later, DDOT would be pronounced dead in the hospital. With a murder investigation being launched following the attack, Skid would be arrested after the murder and would be charged. Later in November 2013, Skid would be found guilty and would be sentenced to 12 years for the murder. Rest in peace DDOT. Following the death of DDOT, his friends would form a new set known as ZT, which has become very popular in the UK drill scene, with rappers like Ballistic, Asco, and Lats dropping songs that gained millions of views. A prominent member of Niners known as V9 would actually show love to DDOT on Facebook, which just shows that some of these guys used to be friends before the beef got deadly, and they had to choose a side. With V9 beginning to diss DDOT years later in music, after ZT would get back and kill a loved member of Niners in one of the most brutal and violent ways, with this member being known as J-Dot. Around the end of 2014, a member of 98's known as J-Dot would get close to an 18-year-old girl. The girl would gain J-Dot's trust. However, unbeknownst to J-Dot, she was friends with rival ZT members. And on the 6th of... January 2015, the girl would arrange to meet J-Dot in Hackney. When J-Dot would arrive, rival ZT members Trey, Psycho, and Asbo would attack him. However, luckily J-Dot would be able to flee the attackers, make you know what it is, man? I heard a saying, in the streets, you really only die over two things. Money and, fe and chasing females. Now, I'm not saying you don't go out there and, and get women, but you got to get what comes to you. Never chase. Can you meet me? Hell no, nah, I can't meet you nowhere. Come slide on me. Or let's meet. Mm -mm, we, now, I cannot pick you up. I can't do none of that. Mm -mm. If it sounds set up, it is. 
making it out alive. During this time, J-Dot was actually unaware that he was set up by the girl, and over the next few hours, the ZT members would search the E9 postcode for J-Dot. However, they couldn't find it. The girl would arrange to meet J-Dot and his friend around Hummerton High Street. The attackers would then be fed this information, and would arrive on the scene moments later. J-Dot would be stabbed three times in the chest, with one- Bro got set up twice? of his wounds breaking his ribs and piercing his heart. The attackers would flee following the attack, with police and emergency services arriving on the scene moments later. However, despite the attempts of medical professionals, J-Dot would sadly be pronounced dead only moments later, with another murder investigation being launched. The investigation would see the arrests of four people, including the girl, who would be- Brother, listen. He got set up, he didn't know yet, but you didn't try- It didn't click to you? Now, damn, Shorty might have set me up. She hitting me up again to hit Kachil? That's tough. Be found I guilty and would be given 14 years in prison. Trey from ZT would be found guilty of the murder and would be sentenced to life with a minimum of 16 years. Psycho, who would be sentenced to life with a minimum of 18 years and 6 months. And an unnamed 14-year-old boy, who is thought to be Asbo from ZT, would be sentenced to 12 years for his role in the murder of J-Dot. Rest in peace, J-Dot. Following the death of J-Dot, an image would start to surface on the internet. This image depicted J-Dot's dead body, with it being extremely graphic showing all of the wounds and scars that he had sustained from the attack, and it would be in 2022 that an unreleased song would be leaked onto the internet, this being titled JD's Corpse, and was an extremely disrespectful song, with the rapper being Lats. Lats would actually- Lats is diabolical for that rap one of the most disturbing choruses with him rapping we got a picture of jd's corpse free asbo always in my thoughts he ain't got no remorse behind the cell doors with this being one of the most insane bars i think i've personally ever heard rest in peace j dot it would be following the death of j dot that members on both sides would begin to drop music in the underground uk drill scene in 2016 a member of zt known as asco would drop uk drill anthems an example of this would be zuvi which gained loads of attention and currently sits on around 1.1 million views. He would also drop a song titled Last Night in London Fields, which sits on around 2.8 million views. It would also be around 2017 that a young member of Niners would begin to gain attention, this being Unknown T, who would drop a song titled Bop with Smoke, which sits on around 888,000 views. But it wouldn't be until 2018 that Unknown T would drop a serious UK anthem I'm that blew that his down. career into the mainstream UK rap scene. It would also be around 2017 that an active member of Niners would begin to get active within the streets. This member being known as Sheggs or Sheggy, who would allegedly go on to kill two people before then becoming victim to the streets himself. On the 13th of November 2017, six members of Niners including Sheggs would travel from E9 to Stoke Newington, which is around a 15-minute drive. The six members would spot an alleged affiliate of Stokey 16, which is a gang that's based around Stoke Newington, and has had beef with 98s for years. Anyways, the six members would see Khan Oslin, who was supposedly in the wrong place at the wrong time. The six members would jump out on Khan Oslin and would stab him multiple times, with one of these wounds even going through his heart. The six attackers would flee following this attack, with police and emergency services being called to the scene. Sadly, Khan Aslan would be pronounced dead on the scene, with a murder investigation being launched moments later. This investigation would only see the arrest of one member, this being a member known as Bruno, who would be arrested shortly after the murder, and would be charged for it. Bruno would actually be the only one ever arrested, and in 2019, he would be found guilty, and would be sentenced to life with a minimum of 27 years. Rest in peace, Khan Aslan. Now, the beef would be very hot during this time, and only around two months after the death of Khan Aslan, another person would fall victim to the streets. However, this time, the person that would die would have no relation to any beef, with them being a civilian, and unknown T even fighting the murder charge. On the Ain't that two civilians? The dude was wrong place, wrong time. He's civilian too. 1st of January 2018, multiple members of the Niners gang would be attending a New Year's party. The members thought to have been present would be Unknown T and Sheggs, as well as a few other Unknown 98s members. A civilian known as Steve Narvaez Jara would also be present at the party. Steve would approach the 98s members and would have an argument with them about a girl. The 98s members would begin to get aggressive, with the incident turning into a massive brawl, with dozens of people hitting and kicking Steve. He would also be stabbed and would be rushed to hospital moments later. However, despite the attempts of medical professionals, 
professionals. Steve would sadly be pronounced dead in hospital hours later, with a murder investigation being launched. The investigation would actually be silent for months, with them searching for the killers. However, by the time they could charge anyone, Sheggs would have become a victim to the streets. Police would then charge Unknown T and two others for the murder. However, they would all beat the case. Rest in peace, Steve Narvaez Jara. Due to the fact that Sheggs was becoming well-known in the streets, his rivals would be looking for any chance to catch him. And sadly, this road lifestyle would catch up to him in April 2018, only four months after the death of Steve Narvaez Jara. It would be around 2018 that young members of both gangs would begin to drop serious UK drill bangers. In February 2018, Lats from ZT would drop a song titled Smackdown, which gained loads of attention. Currently sitting on around 1.1 million views, both gangs would gain millions of views in 2018, with rappers like Unknown T from 98s and Ballistic from ZT gaining tens of millions of views. However, despite all of the new eyes looking in on the music scene, there was still a war going on within the streets, and it would be Sheggs that would sadly be the next person to die as a result of the beef. On the 4th of April 2018, Sheggs would be pedal biking through his block in order to meet some friends. However, what he didn't know was that two of his ops would be on the lurk. Moments later, Sheggs would spot his two ops, these two being known as B2 and TB. Once the two parties would see each other, a knife fight would ensue. Sheggs would actually stab B2 multiple times. However, whilst he was attacking B2, TB would stab Sheggs multiple times, with one of the stab wounds piercing his heart. Sadly, Sheggs would be pronounced dead on the scene. With police and emergency services arriving shortly after the attack, a murder investigation would be launched. This saw the arrest of B2, whose blood would be found on the scene. B2 would be charged and found guilty for the murder. He would then be sentenced to life with a minimum of 17 years years, TB would actually flee the country following the attack, with it being alleged he's still on the run. Rest in peace, Sheggs. Sheggs is actually remembered in loads of 98 songs, in Unknown T's Fire in the Booth. He would rap, Rest up Sheggy, he got B2 no leggies, with this being a reference to how B2 was stabbed on the same occasion Sheggs died on. Following the death of Sheggs, a member of Niners known as Unknown T would drop a UK drill anthem titled Homerton B, which blew up and currently sits on around 29 million views. With this level of success blowing unknown tee up, with him even starting to be booked for shows across UK, which is crazy for someone who has such close ties to the streets. However, Niners weren't the only gang blowing in the UK. I always said that for unknown T to have so much commercial success, and to be locked in like that, like, for, for a novelist at this music stuff, like, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know until you get to deep diving in these little things, these videos like this, and like, damn, Unknown T was like, bro, be the M? Yeah. Mm. UK drill scene. ZT would also be gaining attention, with a member known as Ballistic dropping a UK drill banger titled Who's Next. This song gained loads of attention and currently sits on around 14 million views, which is crazy numbers for a UK drill rapper. Now, the beef between 98s and ZT would continue following the death of Sheggs. However, a lot of the incidents that occurred between the gangs aren't actually known, so I won't be discussing the alleged incidents between the gangs. It would be around 2019 and 20 that new members from 98s would gain attention. These members included V9, KO, and DA, who all gained millions of views after dropping serious UK drill anthems, and it would be in September 2020 that all of these rappers would link up and would drop one of the most well-known UK drill albums, this being titled Class of 98s, which gained loads of attention, with yeah, each song on the album this. having hundreds of thousands of views. If anything, it was clear that the rappers from both ZT and 98s had serious potential and had begun showing this in the UK drill music scene. ZT would also be making noise around 2020 with a member known as Blacka, dropping seriously disrespectful bars, with fans even questioning if he was as active as he made out to be. However, it would be in October 2020 that Blacka would prove how dangerous he was, with Blacka currently serving 35 years for this incident. Dang. On the 11th of October 2020, Blacka and another man would arm themselves with a machine pistol and would travel around Hackney in search of any rival gang members. The two members would come to a- Don't look like Drew Holiday pistol and would travel around Hackney in search of any rival gang members. The two members would come to a stop near a children's playground within the E9 postcode. Blacka would then rise his gun and would start shooting randomly into the park. He would shoot around 13 bullets and would hit three people. This included a 60-year-old, 32-year-old, and 24-year-old who would be rushed to hospital following the shooting and were not involved in the beef. He's into a kid's part? 
Luckily, all three would make a recovery. With the two attackers fleeing in a stolen car, an investigation would be launched following the shooting, with officers watching hundreds of hours of CCTV, with them eventually arresting Blacka and the second man. Both men would be found guilty and would be sentenced. Blacka would be sentenced to 35 years, whilst the other man was sentenced to 27 years. Following the violent triple shooting, members from both gangs would be seriously popping in the music scene. An example of this was KO, who by this time had amassed around 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, dropping serious bangers like Niner Ting and Avengers, which both have over 10 million streams on Spotify. However, KO would find himself fighting a murder case that he got himself wrapped up in around the height of his career, with two people being killed in 2022. On the 3rd of June 2022, an OG member of LFB known as Hypo would be at a party within East London. He would get into an altercation with a bouncer present at the party. The Never heard of Hypo. This bouncer was actually known as Bigga and was from Enfield. Hypo would threaten Bigga with a Rambo-style knife. Bigga would then leave this altercation, returning with a kitchen knife, which Bigga then used to stab I Hypo multiple this. times in the chest. Police and emergency services would be called to the scene following the stabbing. However, sadly, Hypo would be pronounced dead only moments later, with a murder investigation being launched. Bigga would be arrested shortly after the attack and would stand trial. However, he would be cleared of the charges on the basis of self-defense. Rest in peace, Hypo. Following the death of Hypo, members within the LFB gang would begin to have an issue with each other, as Bigga's cousin is actually an LFB member known as Tiny, this then meaning that the LFB gang had started to have in-house issues. However, these have luckily not escalated to anything serious. It would only be around two months after the death of Hypo that a member of 98's known as Gashi would be stabbed by ZT members. 98's members would plan to spin back following the stabbing on Gashi, and only a day later, 98's members including KO and Hitman would get their retaliation. On the 13th of August 2022, four members associated with the he got them pull pull them bugs huge and would get their retaliate They're taller than him on the 13th of August 2022, four members associated with the 98's gang would ride out onto rival ZT territory. Both KO and Hitman would be present on this ride out as well as two other members. The members would spot KB, who was a member of ZT, and the older LFB gang. KB was actually celebrating at his baby's first birthday party when the members would pull up shooting at him. KB would be hit in this shooting and would sadly be pronounced dead on the scene. With paramedics and police arriving moments that, later, too. a murder investigation would be launched following the murder. KO knew that he was going to be arrested in connection, so he would hit the studio, recording as much music as possible. However, only days later, KO and Hitman, as well as other members present, would all be arrested for the murder. And it would be in the end that all four members were charged and found guilty for the murder of KB. All four members have been convicted, but are yet to be sentenced. Rest in peace, KB. During the trial, the court would actually use a song that KO would release a month following the death of KB, this song being titled Laughing Stock, with some very disrespectful bars that alluded to the incident, with KO rapping, Funny how we are the last laughing stock. Someone gets slapped, now the laughing stopped, as well as another bar. Big Booth and Little Booth got hit. Same sig. That's a sour family. With this bar in particular referring to how both Booth and his older brother were both shot with the same pistol, presumably a sig sour pistol. The arrests of KO and Hitman would affect 98's members heavily, with KO being extremely close to blowing in the drill scene. However, he chose to focus on the road life, and now must deal with the consequences. Since the death of KB, no other major in Terrible choice incidents have occurred within the streets. If you have learned anything from this video, make sure that it's to stay away from the road life, as this life only ever leads to jail or death. I'm saying, do what you gotta do, but like, no, be well informed what, what is gonna the outcome is. <laughs> With a prime example of this being KO, who was so Every close time. to blowing in the drill scene, but chose to focus on the road life and is now facing life in prison. Rest in peace everyone in this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Today, I'm in the Tall Bay area. Tough. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. Don't go.